Hi, so I've been wanting to make a video for a little while about how I rate books, and I use a book rating system called Cawpile, which was created by uh, the booktuber Bookroast. So I'm going to show you guys how that works. So I'm going to use one of my favorite books as like the example for showing you how this system works. Say I read this book in January. And I read a physical copy of it. I have a really beautiful edition of it from Litjoy. So I'll put that as the publisher. Um, if I had listened to it in an audiobook, I would put how many hours I had listened. If I uh, read the physical copy, I would put how many pages I read here. Then I would put in the book format and the main genre. And then if there's a notable subgenre, I would type that in here. The age category and then the year it was published. So once some of these things have been filled in, I can now go on to the rating portion, which is where it gets its name, Caught Pile. So there are different categories. Um, C is for characters. If uh, it is a nonfiction, then instead of doing characters, you would do credibility or research. Uh, a is for atmosphere. For comics, it would be art style. For nonfiction, it would be authenticity. W is for writing. Um, for nonfiction, you can also do writing um, in, the, in the sense of readability. P is for plot or personal impact. I is for intrigue. Basically, how well it kept your attention. L is for logic or um, informativeness, and then E is for enjoyment. Um, obviously, all of these categories are very sub subjective, but we'll use The Great Gatsby as an example, given that it's one of my favorite books. And it's also one that a lot of people are familiar with. Most people had to read it in high school. So, the characters. I really think that the characters in The Great Gatsby are very well written. I don't necessarily find them the most likable because most of them are really trash humans, but I think that that's one of the things that actually makes the story good is how much you, like I cared about the story despite the fact that pretty much all of the characters are terrible. Uh, atmosphere, I think atmosphere is a very subjective, I mean, obviously all of these are very subjective, but atmosphere, some people really like something that's very atmospheric and some people like something that's very straightforward. I felt like, to me, it feels like it depends on the, the text and how well the atmosphere is done for the context of what it's trying to do as a story. I think that the atmosphere of Great Gatsby is really good. It very much captures the opulence and also the the hopelessness all at once and so i of course really enjoy that the writing of great gatsby is one of my favorite things <laughs> i think it's really well written i think that um it uh the language is is very beautiful there's a reason why i have the last line of the book tattooed on my rib cage so the next section is plot. It could be how easy you find the plot to follow, whether you found the plot overly predictable, whether you think the plot made sense, though that is kind of leaning into the category of logic, but just how you felt the plot was developed in general. The plot is my favorite part of The Great Gatsby, so obviously there's that. Uh, intrigue how well it kept your attention. Was it hard to get through? Did you have to take several long breaks um, to get through it? Or did you just, were you able to just like read through it in a day? The Great Gatsby is one I've read several times. Sometimes I can read it all in one day. Sometimes I can't just because 
you know, if I, you already know how the book is going to go, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. And it also depends on how much I'm trying to um, read it for entertainment versus for literary merit. So when I'm reading it for like school and stuff like that, um, it takes a little bit longer to get through because I'm annotating and stuff like that. But the first time I read The Great Gatsby, which was in high school, my intrigue was very high when it came to this book because I had never read it before. And I frequently felt like the reading assignments for my class were taking too long. So I read almost the entire book um, when we first got it assigned just because I wanted to get through the story. <laughs> and I felt like the way we were breaking it down in class was taking too long to get through the actual reading. So I actually think I'm going to put that at a nine. Logic. I feel like this book is very straightforward and logical. It's very easy to follow whether you agree with the choices of the characters or not. Like the, the characters are not making logical decisions, but the um, story follows a very um, straightforward logic. It's, it's easy to understand what's happening. So there. And then enjoyment, obviously. There's a reason it's one of my favorite books and it's because I enjoy it. So one of the reasons I decided to put a nine in there is just to, so that you can kind of see um, what it ends up being when the rating breaks it all down. So it added up the categories into a rating that is one out of 10. And then it also translates it into um, star a star rating, like a five star rating, and then a five star rating if you are also including um, half stars. So things like story graph include half stars. Goodreads is just uh, five stars, solid stars. Um, and then cop pile is uh, out of 10. So that is for a book that I really enjoy. We can also do an example of a book that I really don't enjoy. Um, but there is more to this. So if you decide to DNF a book, you can click that you DNF'd it. Um, and then you can also put in a reason why. There are a, a number of good reasons um, already in the form, but you can also add your own. You can track how you got the book. So I own this book, um, but it, I could also, you know, get it from a number of other sources or even um, add in my own. Actually, the way that I own this book is through a book box. So I could put it in like that as well. But I also own a couple of copies of this book. If you are reading it for a book club, you would put that here. For example, uh, I am doing a couple of like kind of buddy read book clubs. Um, and this is one that is often added into my cop pile. Um, which is the Teacup Brigade. Um, if I'm reading it for a readathon, I would click this. I do the Magical Readathon um, by Book Roast every year. Ever since she started doing the Aurelium Academy. Um, if you have not heard of that, I highly recommend looking it up because it's very cool. I would put in the date I started the book. So I said that I had read it in January for the purpose of this example. So I read it January. I started on January 1st, maybe. And then let's say I finished it two days later. And so it'll... Oh, <laughs> I forgot that it's um in month day or, or day month format. So I would actually want to do... Um, like that, which you can switch. I just haven't. <laughs> okay. And so then it says that I read it in three days. Is this a reread? Yes. I have read it several times. Is it a series or a standalone? It is a standalone. Um, if it is a series, then you would track if it's a new series or you're continuing it, or if it's the last book in the series, or if you've decided to DNF the series. If you read in more than one language, you would put what language you read it in. I only can read in English. I'm not good at any other languages. Um, and then you can also mark whether or not the book was translated, who translated it, and its original language. Then we get into the section about representation. Is there queer rep? If so, is it in the main character? Is it present? Is it absent? 
that sort of thing. So um, while there might be some hints at some queerness with some of the characters in The Great Gatsby, there's nothing explicit. So I'm going to put that it's absent. Um, if I wanted to put more details, I would put those here. Is there disability rep? Again, not explicitly. You could potentially make a case for the fact that all of them have some sort of like neurodivergency, um, or that most of them do. Um, but I'm just going to put absent. Is the author new to you? No. Is the author a person of color? F. Scott Fitzgerald is not a person of color. If yes, then you would put um, what ethnicity or, or um, race or whatever. Uh, then you could put um, whether or not they like the gender of, of the person who wrote the book. Um, F. Scott Fitzgerald is a man. And the author's nationality. And he is American. And then you would put whether or not, here, you would put whether or not you reviewed it on things like Storygraph, Goodreads, um, even if you do like a, like a um, Instagram reviews or TikToks or something like that, then you would do that here. If you wanted to add any additional notes, you'd put them here. Now, this is one way that you can do just the rating system. Now, the best part about the call pile is what comes next. Before I show the best part of call pile, I want to first put in a little bit more uh, data. So in contrast, I'm going to use another classic that people are familiar with, but one that I don't like as much. So that's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. I'm going to say that I read it in February, um, that I read an ebook version that was published by Macmillan, because why not? I put in the number of pages, which I just googled, just like I did with the Great Gatsby because I didn't want to have to bother to walk over to my bookshelf which is only like five feet away anyway um, and then it is a novel it is a classic it is a children's book and then let's see when was it published 1865 all right now ratings. Now, the characters in Alice in Wonderland are fine. I didn't actually find any of them to be super dimensional. I remember thinking when I read that book that they were kind of um, shallow two-dimensional characters. So I'm going to just put it at five because they weren't anything special, but they are also weren't necessarily bad, if that makes sense. The atmosphere. I do think that this book is very atmospheric. I think that's kind of part of the the vibes of Alice in Wonderland. I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people like it. Writing wise, um, I don't think the writing was necessarily bad, but it was not for me. So when it, you find yourself in that form, like that place of subjectivity, um, you should just put what number you find to be most accurate out of 10 for um, both giving it grace and uh, giving it your honest opinion. So writing wise, I don't think it was poorly written but it, it was definitely not written for me. I'm going to put it at just slightly above average because I have definitely read things that are worse written. Um, not many classics, but yeah, here we go. Uh, the plot. I do not like the plot of Alice in Wonderland. Again, this is going to be subjective. I think the plot is very, I mean, it's part of that atmospheric vibe is that it's very strange. For me, that made it difficult um, and I, I didn't love that. So I'm going to put that at a four intrigue. I really struggled to get through it because I was just confused the whole time. So not happy with that logic. What logic? <laughs> I think that's kind of part of the point of it is, is to be illogical, but like that, it just didn't suit my taste. Um, and then enjoyment, I, I didn't enjoy it much. Like I, I'm going to give it a two on enjoyment because I, I enjoyed it enough to finish it, which is not, you know, I didn't DNF it. Um, but that, that's not saying much. So that means that out of 10, my overall rating was four. My call pile rating is 4.14. My star rating is a two. And then if we're doing, uh, the story graph version that has like the, the 0.5 stars, um, then it is a 2.5. So there's that. And these opinions can genuinely change depending on when you read it, 
um, when the last time you read it was. And, you know, like you might enjoy certain books at different times more. So if I reread Alice in Wonderland and uh, for some reason decided that I actually uh, like it, like the plot a lot more, then this reading would change. But for this particular reading, and that's one of the reasons why I track the year in in the cop aisle and also the month that I read it in, for this particular rate, uh, reading, uh, let's say I felt meh about it. Since we already went through some of these things, I'm going to uh, skip that. I'm going to go over to um, the date. Say I read it on Mardi Gras, because why not? And then um, finished it on Ash Wednesday. Because, because again, why not? <laughs> oh, I keep making that mistake. Okay, cool. I've read it before. It is a stand. Well, technically, I guess it's a series because there is also Through the Looking Glass and then like some poems that also take place in that world. So um, it is the first in a series. Um, so I'm going to put it there. And um, I have read the rest of the series, so I'm not going to do series DNF. But let's just, for example, um, if I decided that I didn't want to continue the series after that. Um, I don't often fill this one in because I only read in English, but if you read in more than one language, then you would probably want to fill this in. Let's say for some reason I read this one in French. I don't know. Um, yeah. And then it, of course, because it was originally written in English, it would be translated. I'd put the translator, I would put the original language was in English, etc. Again, because classics, we've got, I am going to say that disability rep is present because um, even though it's not well handled, uh, the characters are quote unquote mad, which now we would frame in terms of, of better language. We would talk about uh, mental um, disability rather than madness, but I am going to put that it, it is present. Um, But yeah, so you get the kind of basic idea um, if we're putting in these uh, kind of categories. I guess I could put that he's specifically English. Um, and yeah, so then we, we've got this. So down here we've got some tabs. Uh, there is the uh, series tracker, which I'm just going to look show you real quick. Um, Let's say that the series that I'm reading is um, Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Just, I'm just showing you all of the parts of it really quick before we get into the stats because that's the funnest, the most fun part, funnest. Wow. I have read both books and therefore finished the series. Um, over here, it will show uh, series that are ongoing, series that I've finished, and series that I've DNF'd. If you want to track new books that you've purchased in this year, because again, this is the one for this year, um, you could, um, you would put, you know, when you acquired it, how much it cost you, whether or not you've read it, the format, author title, etc. And it will uh, create a, a chart and also, um, you know, show you the totals and including the cost. So that is really nice, especially if you want to uh, track your book spending. So let's say, for example, that I bought a copy of Dracula this year. I have not. I already have several, but, you know. Um, let's say I bought this in February. I bought a physical book. And it cost me $20. There we go. So it is putting it in as, as pounds. That's something that I can change. Again, I don't necessarily use this sheet as much. Um, but I could do that. Uh, I could also just look at it and know that it actually means dollars. <laughs> but it, you know, 
it kind of just depends on how you want to use it. Um, and then you, I can mark it as read if I read it, and then I know how many books I acquired, how many of those books that I acquired I read, and the total cost. There's also a cheat sheet so that you can have an understanding of, um, you know, some of how you would categorize it, how it relates to um, the star rating, um, the kind of rough rating guide. Again, all of this is subjective. And then the um, suggested guides. So like how these categories fit. This one was for fiction. This one is for nonfiction. So if you're having trouble with any of those categories, this is here to help you figure it out, which is very nice. The reading stats will show you how many books you read per month, including DNFs. So these are the books that I had put in. There is um, the amount of pages that you read per month. So if you obviously if you read more than one book in a month, as I tend to do, it will track um, how many pages you read that month, how many books you read that month, and then you'll know what months you did better than others. If you DNF a book, it'll put it here. If you listened to an audiobook, it'll put that here so that it's not just um, the pages. And under each chart, there is also uh, totals that are broken down for you. This one is if you uh, started a new series um, and you would put that in the caw pile, uh, like here, uh, that would, oops, that would uh, visualize um, the, the series that you've started. Uh, it will track the languages you read it in, the method of reading, physical ebook, etc. Whether it was a series or a standalone, whether or not you reread them or it was a new read. Again, it's calculating all of these totals for you at the bottom as well. How many books you read for a readathon or a book club, what genres you read, how long these books were um, categorized. And of course, the more data you put in over the year, the, be the better your charts are going to look, what format, the original language, how you got it, whether or not you own it or um, are borrowing it from the library, etc. And then who published it. Um, there's also your average star ratings, your average star ratings with half stars, the age categories, publication years, representation. Um, I think both of these also include representation, but I'm not totally sure on that, so I'll have to double check at some point um, whether or not the author was a person of color and their nationality. Number of books you've read by the author, say I decided to read um, F. Scott Fitzgerald's entire collected works, then this number would obviously be higher. And then whether or not it's a author you've read before or is new to you. It will also calculate right at the bottom how many different authors you read over the course of the year. This version that I have here is the updated version for 2024. It's the same as the one that she did last year, but it comes in new colors. So this one that I've been using as the example is the kind of um, cream, very ne uh, Neapolitan ice cream color lay. Um, and then the one that I'm actually using this year is um, kind of a darker range of colors. First, I'm going to show what mine last year looked like. I didn't actually finish filling this in, so I'm going to actually need to do that. I know it's almost March and I still haven't finished filling in last year's cop pile, but this is going to give you a good idea of kind of what it looks like once you've read a lot more books. So um, I think it's almost finished because I am up through some of December in here, so I think I just have to finish off December and then this is this one's done but this was the color lay that i used last year kind of green and and cream um these are the series that i was tracking um and then the reading stats so these are the number of books i read per month uh one thing to note is that if you um if you, you don't necessarily just want to look at one of these charts without comparing the data to other charts. For example, in December, the reason I read so many more books and so many more pages was because I read a lot of graphic novels and comics, which obviously is more pictures than words. <laughs> um, whether, you know, here's audiobooks versus um, 
other things in August I was doing the magical readathon and as as well as in April so I did a lot of audiobooks so that I was making sure I was getting through as many of the books as I wanted to do for my readathon again I only read in English so there's that um, the reading method what form of book it was series standalone rereads books for book clubs books for readathons the genres I read in which I love the way that this one looks at the end of the year. Obviously, you can see I have a clear uh, bias in one category. <laughs> um, the length. I don't really read anything that's over like 600 pages. It's... I, I would like to. They just tend to intimidate me, so I don't end up doing it. Format. Manga, graphic novel, comic were very high this year, but obviously still in comparison to novels, not too much. The original language the book was written in. I read a lot of books last year that were originally written um, in China. And then um, obviously, because I had also read some um, manga, some of them were also originally in Japanese. Um, the publishers. You can see, uh, again, these are the, um, these ones here, a series of mangas, these ones here, uh, a series of um, light novels and also some of their ma manga equivalents. <laughs> um, how I got the book, ratings, publication year, age category, representation, um, and then th that's what these ones are. These are the breakdowns of those representations. So if I, you know, put in the um, kind of category that it shows, of, you know, the spe specificity for these, um, then it will show up in the reading stats as well. And that's what those are. Um, whether or not they were a person of color, um, their gender, nationality, uh, returning or new, and then the number of books per author. This is one of my favorite charts in here just because you can see this is the author that I read most, the who, who wrote most of those light novels that I read um, in uh, Chinese, or I read them in English, but they were originally written in Mandarin. You can see I read a lot more of her books than anyone else's. These are those um, mangas I was talking about. So like when you read an entire series, obviously that's gonna like buff up um, that author in your uh, chart. But yeah, very cool. Um, I read a total of 61 different authors. Most of them were actually new to me. And yeah, so that's what it looks like after, you know, it's had like a year's worth of data, basically. Next color lay I'm going to show you is one of the ones for this year. This is the color lay that I'm going to be using for my reads this year. Obviously, like I said, it's March and I have not done a great job of tracking things. Um, but this is kind of like the dark mode one. So it's got some like kind of dark, um, almost like gem tone colors in it. Uh, very nice. I like it a lot. Uh, so the reading stats will, will reflect that. Um, once I start putting things in, it'll, it'll use those same kind of colors to generate the charts. Very nice. I'm excited about it. And it might seem silly, uh, to care so much about like, you know, the color of the chart you're using, but like, if you're using this every year, it's kind of nice to have those little changes. So anyway, that is the Copile system. Um, that is done by Book Roast. If you have not checked out Book Roast on YouTube, I highly recommend her content. She is amazing. And especially if you are interested in participating in readathons, because she is the master of reading games and reading readathons. I do her uh, TBR Vitar um, uh, TBR reading game, and I also do uh, Magical Readathon. And they're both amazing. She's super creative and, and I've never been disappointed by a single thing that I've done uh, that has her involved. So highly recommend that. And yeah, if you're interested in the call pile, um, she actually links uh, her Google Drive in her videos. If you want more information about call pile, you can also go watch her videos on them. Um, 
but I can also potentially link a copy of Copile in my own video on this. So yeah, hope you have an enjoy this hope this system is helpful to you and uh have a great day